All right, welcome back everybody. I'm Trey Herrera. For those who are new, what are we doing today? Today was supposed to be a track day, but weather outside is saying it's supposed to rain all day. I doubt that I'm going to be able to get to the track today. So with that being said, a um, couple things we're going to go over before getting into this video is a few upgrades that the GTO needs, and then we'll be working on the S10. Today on the S10, I will be pulling off the bed, and then uh, we'll be rolling over the GTO subframe diff axles and everything and getting it kind of mocked up. That is at least the goal because I'm by myself. This may be a little difficult, but that's okay. I'll figure it out. S10 with IRS independent rear suspension out of a GTO should be pretty solid and a good alternative for somebody else who wants to do this and doesn't want to go the Ford 88 route. My dad did want the suspension options of the GTO, so it it's all good. So yeah, we're gonna make it happen. Now, as we get into this video, a couple things I wanted to change up on the GTO after drifting on the track. Number one would be my radiator. Um, as you guys know, I have an aftermarket radiator. It works pretty well for cruising around, uh, occasional pulls, but consistent sliding and RPM. The car was overheating a little bit and I did end up putting a hole in it where we had to fix it with some JB Weld because uh, that's all the options we had um, just to get it back. So I do need to upgrade my radiator and do something with that. Next thing I'm gonna do for the GTO is the GTO makes a lot, like the one-to-one -one gear makes the most power, um, which is fourth gear on my GTO. So with that being said, I want to make more power under the curve. Um, right now I am on a 132AR and a T56. And um, I do believe that if I do a sm slightly smaller exhaust housing, still staying T6, I could get the turbo to spool up and make a bit more power under the curve. And uh, that will be on order pretty much as of re I've already ordered it. So yeah, so that, that'll be fixed. Uh, another thing that I destroyed was the radius rod bushings. Um, they were already on the way out, but after drifting, they were really on the way out. So uh, we're gonna get those replaced as well. I do think I want to up the spring rates just a little bit on the GTO, get some more of the body roll taken out. Lastly, I wanna go a more squared setup on my wheels and tires. Um, I do, after driving that Corvette, the Corvette had 295s or no, 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 he had 305s on all four corners. Now I don't wanna go that big, but I do want to get more squared up front. Um, I did feel like the front tires were rolling over themselves just a little bit running on my little stretch, my baby stretch. Um, but that'll be once I get the front fenders fixed. So I do think I could do a 275 on all four corners or possibly do a slightly lower offset with a wider wheel. So they poke just a little bit more and um, run like a 295. Uh, it'd be sick to run a 295. Um, at least a 275 up front, 295 in the rear, and I would like to try the R888s because the Kindas are not available in my size at the moment. Alright, we got the bed off. What's next? What's next is we're going to take a bunch of measurements. Um, ideally, uh, what I want to do with this truck is I would like to have the bed bolt in exactly how it came out as factory. First things first is the GTO rear sub has only three mounting points, right? So this guy, that guy, and that. So essentially this one could run straight across somewhere back here and then it could bolt in. Yeah, the true fun begins right this second. All right. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho. All right, we got most of the guts out. So I'm really excited to do this project because this would be one of the biggest projects that I've done to date. I've done a lot of LS swaps and a lot of fab stuff, but uh, nothing this extensive. So. I'm really excited to do this, so I'm sorry if you guys see me getting all excited. I'm gonna put these wheels on the axles, pretty much the wheel assembly on the GTO, or from the GTO, and we're just gonna roll it and kinda get a somewhat of a mock-up going on. Uh, we're gonna try to match the drive shaft so we don't have to change the sizing of the drive shaft or anything like that. S10, extremely simple. I could see why a lot of people race them. Um, but yeah, that took me a whole 25 minutes slacking to pretty much pull the bed, pull the rear end out of it. So yeah. All 
Okay, so I got the GTO rear subframe pulled over and just quick based on looking at it, I think this is not gonna be very, very difficult. Um, pretty much where the diff mounts, the diff mount will be back in here. Um, I really feel like I could run a, a bar, some sort of tubing across from here to here um, and then have it mount to the back. Similar tubing out here with the bolt on top so this can mount and that would essentially do it. But uh, right now we just got to get some measurements. I'm going to jack this thing up into then we'd have to figure out spring perches. We got to just do some thinking, some math, and uh, but I don't think this will be that difficult. All right, guys, we got some reinforcements here. We got my father. He hasn't been in the videos in a while. And then Seuss. Seuss was getting loose at the track. He ended up breaking his throttle cable or something. How'd that happen? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Seuss uh, showed up. He's dropping the tank right now. And uh, we're going to mock this up. We're, what we're going to do is actually put the wheels on the subframe and then uh, put the bed back on to make sure that the wheels are in the right position and just makes it a little simpler and with two extra hands this won't be as bad as me just doing it by myself I don't know, remember we just, you could get him to grid okay. uh -huh. Are we totally disconnected? I think so it's yeah. just, You're just sitting on that thing Yeah, it has to Sleepy, look at my eyes. <laughs> All right, guys, this is what we got so far, and I think it looks pretty good. I think it's gonna work actually a lot easier than what we planned on. Um, pretty much, this is where the subframe mounts on the GTO. Pretty much, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a block with a nut here, and uh, that would be the one mounting point on both sides, and then uh, most likely cut off the bump stops here build some sort of plate for the springs either the springs or run a true coilover from the frame to so from the frame here to here and then that will be taken care of but so far so good this is almost identical spacing or like measurement from the from the frame to the ground as the GTO as my personal GTO but it looks like it's almost meant to be in here after after some work huh Today we're actually supposed to go and drag race, but weather is trash. We had, Seuss actually texted me this morning. Do you think the truck's gonna be open? <laughs> so we're gonna try to get him to do a 12 today, but no go. So now we're in the shop building stuff that's not supposed to be built while we still can. The temptation to actually chop stuff and make something really cool though. Yeah. <laughs> Full tube. We're, we're trying to keep the frame as factory as possible. Okay, so this is where we're at right now. Um, we have everything in order to actually get the, the subframe mounted up. Um, pinion angle is actually really, really nice and straight. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I cut a piece of tubing. This is pretty heavy, not gonna lie, pretty heavy. Most likely I'm gonna chop some other stuff out of here. Um, but literally the tubing is going to go straight across the frame and then I'm going to weld another bracket for the diff mount itself so then um, it will be solidly mounted to the frame um, with really no wiggle room at all for the diff to move back and forth this way. I know that is an issue in the GTOs. Um, a lot of it comes from this mount itself. Now I'm not going to be using this mount in particular because this was the one from the car accident. Okay, so I cut this a little long. I'm going to chop it. I'm gonna chop it right here. Um, and then this will go on the inside there. And then I'll, I'll build another bracket for in there. Something to that effect, I'm not exactly sure. Uh... 
So right now I'm just making sure it's square. 18 and a half. So right now we're at a square. So this one's a half inch off. The reason why we, I got it kind of figured out already on that side, on the inside of the frame, it has like a little L angle that I'm bumping to. And then that's where I'm getting my reference point. So from this hole to this one, yeah, 18 and a half right here. Almost, I'm 16th off, I'm gonna move it forward just a little bit. Just. Now for right now, I'm just gonna tack these in place just in case I'm screwing this all up. If I only have it tacked, it's way easier to take apart. I'm trying to get a good balance, but we're not trying to make it heavy by any means. So um, I do think, you know, this rear end could get switched up. Like these were the old shock mounts, these could come out. Uh, most likely this will come out, maybe I tube it back here, you know, something like that. Um, it all depends on how the bed sits, but right now we're golden. Solid day, tons and tons of work that was done. Um, solid day, um, I feel like we, I'm pretty much gonna have this fully mounted and 90% done tomorrow. Um, it actually wasn't that difficult. Uh, for the most part, everything lined up and then the geometry kind of worked um, without having to do a whole lot. A little bit of figuring, more so on the measurement side, but uh, yeah, it's not too bad at all.